sometimes when you ask AI something, you want it to remember. In fact, if you have a very long prompt, you might even tell it, hey, don't forget, I'm gonna tell you like 10 different things, so acknowledge that you can do that. And other times you're like, you know what, I just wanna ask something fresh and new and just see what the answer is, or in a different way or a different context, so I don't want you to remember who I am or what I do or where I live. I just need like a, a objective, generic kind of answer, and I don't want you to even remember this conversation later. Maybe if you use AI for therapy. So let's talk about privacy settings today and how AI can either know who you are or not know who you are and how you can update and delete those conversations. Let's talk about my favorite first, which is Claude. Now it really doesn't matter which version of Claude you use. I have the pro version, just so you know, of Claude, ChatGPT, and Perplexity. So the settings might vary if you're on the free plan, but Claude cannot remember anything in between chats. So and pretty that's pretty much true for ChatGPT and Perplexity as well. So if you look inside of here on the left, you'll see all of your previous conversations. So if I wanted to talk about plotting my cozy mystery novel, I would have to open this again. If I wanted to talk about my cupcake recipes, I'd have to open this conversation again. But if I jumped into my Pantone color choices for designers, and I started asking it about the cozy mystery novel I was talking about here, it has no idea what I'm talking about. So every single chat is new. Now, if you don't want to keep this chat, you can just hit this little trash can here. It'll delete the chat and Claude will never remember it. Now, if you want Claude to know who you are, so when you ask questions, it has some context. If you go over here to the bottom left and you go to settings, and then you'll see profile come up. You'll put your name in, you'll tell it what you want to be called. And then I also have told it, so when I ask responses, I want it to know I'm a graphic designer, I create content for YouTube and you know book covers, notebooks, all of these things. And I've told it to just keep that no matter what conversation I start, it knows that every time. Also over here, if you want it to enable suggestions for like when you upload a CSV, it will do that. Um, you can connect this to your Google Drive. Now it's not going to connect and like know everything in your Google Drive. It's just giving you the opportunity when you were inside of like, let's say I start a new chat, you see that little upload there. I can upload a file for reference or an image, but I can also take an image or an upload from Google Drive if I already have my Google Drive connected. That's all it means. So if you don't want it to know, obviously, any of this information, you would just turn, you would delete all of this and turn it off. So that's Claude. Um, if, well, I should also say too, if you have projects, you can group a lot of chats together. So say Card Deck Academy or how to use Claude, I can put those together. They won't know with in between those conversations what was said. However, I wouldn't have to skim through this whole long list of 78 of other chats to find the chat I'm looking for. I could. It's basically like a file folder structure when you put it into projects. Let's go over to ChatGPT. So ChatGPT, even though it says when you start a new conversation, so you can see my previous ones, I asked about purple, right? If I start a new conversation, it shouldn't know anything about the other conversations, but it does. So let me show you. Um, please elaborate on my brand color. That's all I've said, so it should know what that color is, but it does. It says purple because I've talked about purple. Now, how does it know that even though this is a totally new conversation? If I go over here to the top right and I go to settings and I go to personalization, there is a button here that you can toggle on or off. Mine is on for memory. That means it's going to remember things from conversations. So if I go in here to manage, you can see everything that it has remembered. If you want it to not remember something, you can hit the little trash icon and it will no longer be and it's kind of like, I guess, long-term memory. Now, just like Claude, you can also personalize it. So over here, 
under customize chat GPT, now I can tell it where I live, all about me, how I want it to respond, my web searches, so my preferences, and it's going to remember that every time I start a new project or a new conversation, sorry. Projects are different. Projects are just like we had in Claude where they had projects where you can group everything together just so you can find your conversations a little faster. All right, let's talk about perplexity. So perplexity remembers everything, even though it has this cool feature down here at the bottom left, incognito mode, it still knows who you are. I don't even know why they said that. So if I go in here and I start a new conversation and I say, please elaborate, or what was my question? On my brand color, it's going to know that my brand color, it's gonna do a Google search, right? because it knows who I am, it knows my name, I told it what it does, um, and it's gonna go ahead and start talking about orange and purple, right? So that's because I was as me. Now, if I start an incognito and I say a new thread and I ask it again, in theory, it shouldn't know anything about me. It shouldn't know that I'm a graphic designer. Um, it shouldn't be able to Google anything about me because it's in incognito mode. However, as a graphic designer and contact, it still knows. So even though I'm in incognito, it still really isn't like an incognito mode. So I'm sure perplexity is possibly working on this. I don't know, but every conversation that you have, um, but see it says library disabled while in, in incognito. That's not, I mean, sure, go ahead and disable the library, but otherwise these are questions that you had before if you want to follow up on another conversation or thread, you can do that within there. It only remembers, in theory, between the threads, but for some reason it seems to remember everything. So if you hit this little gear icon next to your name at the bottom and you go to profile, this is where I put all of my personal information in there, just like I did for ChatGPT and for Claude as well. Now you could click to verify in your LinkedIn profile, but I'm not going to ask it any career questions or work questions, only because I do HR and I, feel like, I don't know, I've been doing HR for like 15, 20 years, so I just feel like I know all the answers. There's really nothing creative that needs to be done with my day job, like, um, so that's just me though. If you have a different day job or you think you want to ask it work questions, that could be useful. This is interesting over here, purchases. So if you've seen lately, you can shop on Perplexity. So if you say get started, it will ask you for your phone number and your credit card, which is what most uh, sites need in order to finish the purchase and you can actually buy things right here on Perplexity. I did not uh, put my information in only because I do not want to be tempted to buy anything. <laughs> However, I do think it is a pretty cool setting. So that's a wrap on everything in Perplexity and Perplexity has this thing called spaces. So you can take all, same thing again, you can take all of those different thread conversations and group them together so you don't have to go into a library and search through a big list of things. They can all be kind of like contained for you. And then even in there, I think you can share them. It's like they're private. You can have ones that are public. Uh, so that is perplexity. Um, and in fact, I think you could share these just like a notion site if someone, I guess, wanted to read through all of your prompts and your questions. Gemini, um, same thing. Every time you start a new chat, it doesn't remember. I actually didn't pay for Gemini. I don't actually like Google uh, AI every time I ask it a question. So like I will go out. So someone asked me like, why do you use all three? I'm, you know, when you go out to lunch with your friends and the waiter comes over and he's like, what do you want to eat? And I'm always like, I'll go last because I want to hear, I don't know why, I want to hear what Jen's eating and Meg and Catherine and Karen, like whoever I am out with with my friends. And then after I hear everybody, then I'll like make a decision. So it's kind of the same thing. I like to hear the answer from Claude, ChatGPT, and Perplexity. And they all give really good ones. Gemini gives literally the worst answers. It's almost like, remember when AI first came out, like, I don't even know, three or four years ago, and it just gave these generic answers. Or if you use the AI bot built inside of Canva, and it gives just terrible, um, super generic answers where you're like, this is so written by AI. That's what Google Gemini gives me. So I am definitely not paying for that um, or upgrading. So 
I do not know how the privacy settings work on this, but we could try to figure it out together. I mean, I don't think it has any privacy settings, mostly because it's tied to your Google account where it kind of knows everything. It's like when you're on your phone and Facebook isn't even open, but someone asks you a random question, say like, I don't know, about the Boris, um, Borealis, Aurora, Aurora Borealis. And all of a sudden, 10 minutes later, you get like an ad for an Aurora Borealis coat or poster. And you're like, I don't, where did this come from? Because <laughs> your phone was listening to you. So anyways, I think that's what the privacy settings in Google will be. That's at least my prediction. So that was a wrap on, we did Claude, we did ChatGPT, Perplexity. You can put your personalization in there into the settings and you can turn memory on or off. And remember the incognito mode inside of Perplexity doesn't really work like you'd think it would for incognito. So, um, so there's that. <laughs> All right, I hope that was helpful. Um, and remember, if you want to delete something, there is always, whenever you hover over any of these conversations, there is usually a trash can so you can delete that entire thread. All right, I hope everyone's having a great day and I will talk to you later. Bye.